Since Durika and Ruta's wedding, Koto found himself ensnared in a situation of despair and powerlessness. Even heroes, at times, succumb to moments of weakness. Koto, without any means to prove his innocence, felt diminished and impotent in the face of Ruta's cunning plot. The weight of his insignificance in this vast world bore heavily on him, deepening his sadness and disappointment. Without a home, as President Natsu's residence reverted to public property upon his death, Kodo rented a modest room for shelter. In the daytime, he toiled in menial jobs to eke out a living, constrained by the deletion of his identification number and account by Ruta. Unable to work in his chosen profession, Kodo faced the harsh reality of obscurity, unable to assert his true identity, as night fell, Kodo sought solace in the numbness of intoxication. In his inebriated state, he drifted into dreams where he was the groom, and Durika, the radiant bride. Walking hand in hand to the wedding podium, Kodo experienced a fleeting happiness. Amidst the haze of alcohol, nostalgia tugged at his consciousness. After work, Kodo returned home, eagerly seeking solace in the embrace of alcohol and the faded images of Durika. Lost in the depths of his drunkenness, he relinquished his plans and ambitions, forgetting the promises he had made to President Natsu before his untimely demise, the room Kodo inhabited was a stark reflection of his inner turmoil. Bare walls adorned with peeling paint mirrored the emptiness that pervaded his existence. A single window, grimy and obscured, offered a view of the indifferent cityscape, a constant reminder of the world from which Kodo felt estranged. In the solitude of his rented abode, Kodo grappled with the relentless onslaught of despair. Each passing day seemed to blur into the next, a monotonous cycle of survival devoid of purpose or hope. The memory of Durika's tearful acceptance of Ruta's proposal haunted him, a painful reminder of the love he had lost, with each sip of alcohol, Kodo sought refuge from the harsh realities of his existence. The burning liquid offered a temporary reprieve, numbing the ache in his heart and dulling the sharp edges of his despair. Yet, as the intoxication faded, Kodo was inevitably confronted with the starkness of his reality, the knowledge that he was a mere pawn in Ruta's sinister game. In the depths of his inebriation, Kodo's thoughts drifted back to happier times, to moments spent with Durika, their laughter echoing in the recesses of his mind. He clung to these memories like a lifeline, seeking solace in the fleeting glimpses of joy they provided amidst the overwhelming darkness, but as dawn broke and reality reclaimed its hold, Kodo was once again confronted with the harsh truth of his circumstances. The world outside remained indifferent to his plight, unmoved by the anguish that gnawed at his soul. And so, he resigned himself to another day of struggle, the weight of his despair heavy upon his shoulders. In the city streets, Kodo moved with the listless gait of one who has lost all sense of purpose. His once strong shoulders now stooped under the burden of his sorrow, his gaze hollow and vacant. He passed by bustling markets and crowded thoroughfares, a ghost among the living, unseen and unnoticed by those around him. As he walked, fragments of memories flickered in his mind, moments of tenderness shared with Durika, stolen kisses and whispered promises. But with each step, these memories grew more distant, fading like wisps of smoke in the wind. And in their place, a profound emptiness settled in Kodo's heart, a gaping void that no amount of alcohol could ever hope to fill, lost in his despair, Kodo found himself drawn to the familiar comfort of the local tavern. Here, amidst the dim glow of flickering candles and the murmur of drunken conversation, he sought solace in the oblivion of intoxication. The bitter sting of alcohol offered a temporary respite from the relentless ache in his heart, numbing his senses to the pain that threatened to consume him. But even as he drowned his sorrows in drink, Kodo could not escape the haunting specter of Durika's absence. Her face lingered in his thoughts, her voice a distant echo that whispered through the haze of his drunken stupor. And with each passing moment, 
The realization of her loss cut deeper, a wound that refused to heal, as the night wore on and the tavern emptied of its patrons, Kodo remained seated at the bar, lost in the labyrinth of his own despair. The bartender, a grizzled old gorilla with a weathered face and a sympathetic gaze, watched him with a mixture of pity and concern, another round, the bartender asked, his voice gentle yet tinged with sorrow, Kodo nodded silently. His eyes fixed on the half-empty glass before him. He knew that no amount of alcohol could ever hope to fill the void in his heart, but still, he clung to the fleeting illusion of numbness it provided. But even as he drank, Kodo could not escape the gnawing ache of loneliness that consumed him. In the depths of his despair, he longed for the warmth of Durika's embrace, the sound of her laughter ringing in his ears. But she was gone, lost to him forever, and in her absence, he was adrift in a sea of darkness. As the first light of dawn filtered through the tavern windows, Kodo rose unsteadily from his seat, his head swimming with the effects of alcohol. With weary steps, he made his way out into the cool morning air, his footsteps echoing hollowly on the deserted streets, in the cold light of day, the city seemed to hold its breath, as if waiting with bated breath for some unseen calamity to unfold. But Kodo paid no heed to the world around him, lost in the depths of his own despair, for him, the world had become a shadowy labyrinth of pain and loss, a maze from which there was no escape. And as he stumbled through its winding corridors, he knew that he was utterly alone, a solitary figure adrift in a sea of darkness, but even in his darkest moments, a flicker of hope remained, a tiny ember that refused to be extinguished. Deep within his heart, Kodo clung to the belief that someday, somehow, he would find a way to reclaim the happiness that had been stolen from him. And until that day dawned, he would continue to wander the lonely streets, searching for a glimmer of light in the enveloping darkness.